Hi, I wanted to sculpt a giraffe today. I like to sculpt whimsical animals. They're not like true to form, like 100%. They're not completely realistic. They're more of a caricature and that's fun for me. So uh, I've got my clay, it's an earthenware clay and I'm going to make a giraffe. And normally when I'm sculpting an animal, I start with the abdomen, but because the giraffe neck is so long, uh, I want to get the neck and head formed and then let it rest while I do the rest of the animal so that the neck can firm up a little bit. So I'm going to start rolling out my little neck here. It's just rolling out a coil, but I'm going to leave it a little thicker at the top because that's what I'm going to use for my head. I'm going to bring forward the snout. Just compress and smooth gently forward. They have a weird nose if you've ever really looked at a giraffe. They're kind of interesting. I feel like that's what inspires people when they're drawing dragons because their nose is a strangely shaped, pushed forward, pushed down, and really skinny in the bone area. So I'm just gonna play with that a little bit, yeah. Let me get even skinnier and whatever's extra, pull that back down into the neck. Oh, it's looking like a camel. Well, I better fix that. Oh, let's do a camel, camel next. All right, now, there we go. And they have a nice strong forehead. So let me show you, push that down so you can see the forehead, okay. There, that's a good start. And we'll let that rest for a little bit. Smooth that out. Now that I see it laying here, it's like, holy cow, that's a lumpy neck. We don't want a lumpy neck on a giraffe. They're so slick and lean and smooth. There we go. I love how we can just play with the clay, smoothing it gently to erase any lines and unevenness. And it's all with such a gentleness. I'm not applying much pressure at all. The clay is so easy to manipulate. So now I want to start with the, the core, the abdomen, um, the tummy. So I'm gonna roll it around, bring in those bumpy edges, and then go back and forth to elongate it. And like I said, it's just a caricature of a sculpture of a giraffe. So I'm not 100% getting all the muscles in place. Um, I haven't got it all memorized, but I'm gonna just make it kind of an oval, give the back a slight arch. Yeah. Round in the ends. And because the clay is so soft, I am going to give the, the giraffe long legs, but um, and as you see here, I have them in a lying down position and these, this is not really how a giraffe would lie down with the legs, you know, kind of like he's contemplating and um, crisscrossing his legs. But like I said, I like to do them in a more whimsical, fun way. So I'm going to crisscross the legs or just have fun with them. I roll them out nice and skinny and long and then the hooves I kind of defined just by pressing my fingers against them. Long and skinny, and then they can have a knobby little knee. There we go. That's plenty long for one. Need a little bit more to add on to this one here. There we go, press that. I like to press the hoof a little flat and then keep the knee a little knobby, pushing it together. There we go, we got two. And of course the hind leg is going to be a little bit more beefy. So I'm gonna leave a little bit more 
up at the top here. A little bit more muscle and strength. That's going to bend. It's, they always have this bend in them. Ooh, clean that up a little bit. Oy, looks like a broken leg. Love that the clay is so forgiving. There, push in the hoof. Go, that's one. We'll do the other hind leg. Patting flat the hoof, extending the skinniness nice and smooth. You can roll coils on the tabletop, you can roll coils in your hand. Either way works. Just going to match it up here so they look a little alike. And I'm going to probably have my legs kind of flopping underneath the giraffe, kind of like um, he just kind of laid down to rest and kind of in a ragdoll form. So, all right, here's the abdomen. We've left this resting. Oh, now I see there's a bump here. So here we go. Get rid of that. Don't like that too much here, I think. So get rid of some of it. See how rah, sad that is, right? We don't want it to fall over. That's why I was leaving it rest. So it could use a little bit more time yet. In the meantime, while it is resting some more, I can make the mane. The mane is a super skinny, skinny coil. There's many different ways you could like pinch out little tiny separate pieces of clay to do the mane in this style if you like which is kind of fun. Um, but the way I'm going to do it right now is I'm just going to make a long, long skinny coil and then brush it, kind of texture it with my wire brush to make it look like little straight hairs. Do that on the other side as well. It broke. My students get upset when their clay breaks. I'm like, it's clay. Scratch and wet it together. It'll all be fine. Just giving it that little bit of texture here. There we go. So now I'm going to score and slip it onto the head here. Oh, that's too much of the snout. Took all that time to shape it. Now I decide I don't like it. That's cool. I get to change my mind as often as I like. The clay is still soft and pliable. So, that looks a little more real, realistic, <laughs> more of a caricature, just fun, 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 fun. I'm going to put the nostrils in while I'm looking at the front of him. See that? And then I'm going to put little eye sockets in there. So now you can probably picture how this is actually going to be a giraffe. So, like I said before, now I'm going to put the mane on. I'm going to scratch and wet down the length of the neck. And then very, very carefully scratch and wet the length of the mane. And gently put that on. There we go. If it comes apart, no big deal. Scratch and wet it back together. When you're working with super tiny pieces of clay, they a lot of times do come apart. But we score and slip it. And that repairs it. And then if you ever have a seam or extra scoring marks that you don't like, you can take a dampened paintbrush and smooth all those extra lines out. Some eyeballs. Let's make, oh, the eyeballs are super, super tiny. Just a little super tiny bit. Ever so small. Two of them alike, preferably. Make sure they're the same size. And then it's kind of hard to get them scratched and wet in, so I just take a needle tool, wet it, poke the eyeball, and put it right in place. 
with the eye socket, poke the eyeball, and wrap it in place. There we go. So it's still not looking like a giraffe. It needs the horns and it needs some ears. So I'll take some clay and roll out what would be a fuzzy little horn. And roll out the next one. They should be the same size, of course. There we go. And I'll scratch and let those on. They're up on either side of the mane, up on top of the head. Those are fragile. Sometimes I have to repair some of my students' giraffe horns because they're so fragile and they get bumped off. I'll adjust it a tiny bit with the needle tool. There we go. Okay. And ears. Roll them out. I just roll a little bead in my fingers and then go back and forth a little bit and flatten it. And then another bead. Again, trying to get the same size. Roll it back and forth and flatten it. There they are. So I'll scratch and wet that on. He's looking a little derpy, isn't he? That's all right. That makes it fun. Hee <laughs> Okay, so now I've always noticed that on giraffes, they have such beautiful long eyelashes. So I'm gonna just take a tiny pinch of clay to make the eyelashes over each eye. There we go, and then I'll scratch and wet that above. And then I'm going to use the needle tool to kind of manipulate it and put it in position. Okay, actually I'm going to use the needle tool to even scratch and wet it on. It's kind of hard to pick up such a small piece of clay. Look at that for a second here and then I'll show you. This is when I get to learn how bad my vision is. Just a sign of getting older, that's all. <laughs> okay. Just touching it a couple of places to make sure it's reinforced. Looking a little even. There we go. Still a soft, soft neck, so I have to be very careful. It's going to go there eventually, but First, I'm going to put the legs on. So the idea then is to put everything in position and then don't touch it for a while so it has time to firm up. So I'm going to scratch and wet these front legs on and bend them just kind of like, mm -hmm -hmm. I just kind of flop down to rest. Done running and playing. and letting, scoring and slipping, making sure that everything stays together. There. Oops. There. And the hind legs will do the same thing. Score and slip back here. And slip there, and this one's going to be kind of underneath. And then this one. Yeah, do you see it? Kind of like a rag doll he, giraffe. He just kind of was running and playing, and now it's just time to be done. tail will be just a little piece of clay and I'll leave a little knob at the end because that's where there's extra tough of hair. Go 
cool, cool, cool. All right, let's hope this giraffe stays standing. Just the neck anyway. That's where it's going to go. Now with my students, I would advise them, mm, maybe your neck is too long. Best thing is to cut it a little shorter because that clay is so soft, it doesn't want to support itself yet. So I'm going to follow my own advice and put it together like this. Erase the seam as much as possible. There we go. And there's our derpy little giraffe. Thanks for watching.